Hi, I'm Gert Moberens, Director and Founder of the Lakipos Institute for Synthetic Biology. Today I will talk about the revolution that is going on in science. So let's start. From hypothesis to data-driven research. Or, a little bit more provocative, the end of the age of science and the dawn of the age of systemics. We will cover the ongoing revolution in science. Everything will change. In part one of the talk, we will explore the philosophy and logic behind the traditional hypothesis driven science. The crisis of this method we will discuss in part two. We will look in part three at the paradigm changes, changes that will lead to the end of science as we know it. In part four we will see how data-driven systemics becomes a new research paradigm and what this means for our everyday life as scientists. Part 1. Hypothesis driven science. About 2500 years ago there was a glorious awakening. Greek philosophers argued that the universe is noble. Why? Their reasoning, it is ordered. About 600 before Christ we meet the pioneers of science. Mysticism was obsolete. The world could be explained with the help of what they called Logos. They started asking the question of how nature is built. They figured out that the base for all understanding of nature is a question, what is reality? Some believed that all reality has a mental origin. This led to the concept of idealism, which we come back to later. Others saw matter as the base of reality. This resulted in the concept of materialism, which has been the leading paradigm of science for the past decades. This concept means we have an object, let us say DNA. We are able to measure this DNA with methods like X-ray, crystallography and others. This leads to objective data, to facts. Objective in this context means the data are true, independent of the scientist who collected them. Thus our picture of the DNA is identical with the object DNA which exists independent of us. Materialism is a key concept underlying hypothesis driven research. Objective data, facts are the main argument in order to test the truth of a hypothesis. So, how does this concept work? The scientific process begins with guesswork about things we cannot observe. The hypothesis. A hypothesis needs to be simple. We use reductionism and search for single correlations. This means guessing how A and B are connected. We do not make a hypothesis involving many components A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, K, L and so on. Complex systems are difficult to test and testing is key. The testing of a hypothesis is done by the deduction of an empirical consequence. An empirical consequence is a statement which follows logical from the hypothesis. It should be possible with the help of observations and data to decide if this statement is true or false. In the next step we do our experiments and collect data. If the data are equal to the deduced empirical consequence, we conclude that the probability of the hypothesis increases. In the other case, where the data are different from the empirical consequence, we conclude 
that the probability of the hypothesis decreases. If we watch this concept critically, we see that we do not have a pure materialistic concept. We deduce the empirical consequence with the help of logic. Logic is a concept of the brain, a fundament of idealism. This we will come back to later. Let us have a closer examination of the logical form we found in the hypothesis-driven research. What is a logical form? Let us start with an example sentence. If it's raining, so the streets are wet. If and so are called logical words. These are kept in a logical form. The rest is substituted with symbol signs. So instead of it is raining, we use P. And instead of the streets are wet, we use Q. So we get if P, so Q. The first logical form we find in the hypothesis driven method is called modus tollens. If P, so Q. We observe not Q and conclude not P. To make this easier to understand, we will use our example. We know if it's raining, so the streets are wet. We observe that the streets are not wet and conclude that it is not raining. This reasoning is correct because it's not possible to find a contradictory example. For our hypothesis method, this means if hypothesis, so we can deduce an empirical consequence. We do not observe data corresponding to the empirical consequence and conclude that the hypothesis is not true. This is correct concluded if the data are correct measured. The second logical form is called confirmed consequence. If P, so Q, we observe Q and conclude that P is correct. This conclusion is false, as we will see in our example. We know if it's raining, so the streets are wet. We observe that the streets are wet and conclude that it is raining. This reasoning is false because we easily can find contradictory examples. There are many possibilities where the streets could be wet. Somebody has washed the streets, the tube was broken and so on. So there are many reasons why the streets are wet. If you observe wet streets, we cannot conclude that it is raining. For a hypothesis method, this means if hypothesis so empirical consequence. We make our experiments and our data conform to the empirical consequence. We believe that we can conclude that the hypothesis is true. However, this conclusion is false. Another hypothesis, di different from our, could have resulted in our empirical consequence. In the best case, we can say that our data tell us that the statistical probability of our hypothesis increased, but nothing more. However, this last method is a chosen one for our publications due to our problems of publishing negative data. So we are right into the crisis of the hypothesis-driven science.